Every time I check out budget CPUs on AliExpress, I always come across two six cores that always have a really good price. And that is the i5-11400F as well as the Ryzen 5 5600. Now both these CPUs are six cores and 12 threads. And in fact, the prices are very close to one another with currently the i5-11400F being able to be had for 73-ish dollars shipped and then the Ryzen 5 5600 being able to be had for around $79 shipped. Now in today's testing, we will be using the RX 9070 XT just because I feel like it's not only a more obtainable GPU, but it's also priced a lot better than say an RTX 5090 or a 5080, even not just from the base MSRP cost of the card, but also the actual street price of the GPU. Even though we will have a few benchmarks later in the video with the RTX 5090, just to really squeeze out any differences if you're really conscious about buying one over the other. But that said, let's take a look at our test system here first, which consists of an H570 motherboard for the Intel side, and then for the AMD side, a B550. Now they're both ASRock Phantom Gaming boards, and on both systems, we are using a real bottom of the barrel budget cooler. So with that aside, let's get the first benchmark up on the screen here for you guys, which is Warhammer Space Marine 2. And here's where at 4K, we saw no difference between not just these two CPUs, but also I'm going to leave in the previous benchmarks we did with the Ryzen 7 7700, as well as the 9800X3D. And then we've got for 1440p, when we go down to 1440p, we actually do start to see a difference between these CPUs. And this is to the tune of about 10 FPS in favor of the Ryzen 5 5600. Though if you're enjoying these benchmarks, we'll move on to more of them right after today's video sponsor, which will definitely help you save some money. Are you interested in getting today's CPUs at an even further discount? Well, if so, then today's video sponsor, AliExpress, has the perfect cash back campaign happening right now, where you can in turn get money back every time you buy something starting with a 2% cash back that scales all the way up to 10% with a max limit of a thousand AUD savings. So basically the more you buy, the more you save, unlike a particular GPU brand that we know. Now to take advantage of this, you must be in Australia as it only applies to Aussies and the Australian dollar. And just join Team Tech yes City by clicking the link in the description below or simply scanning the custom QR code, which I'll put up on the screen for you guys. You'll then start earning 2% cash back on everything you buy as long as the seller ships your item. Now this is a team challenge. So the more our team buys, the higher this cash back percentage goes. In other words, the more we all save. There's also some coupons that you can try to take advantage of too. And for my favorite deals, we have the Ryzen 7 7700 staple high-end gaming CPU. Then we have the two budget six cores that we're featuring in today's video, both going for really good prices. I'll put all the links in the description below Let's get back to the video. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And we'll continue on with the GPU bound benchmarks. Then we'll also move on to some 1080p lobe settings benchmarks later. But here's where Final Fantasy 16, we're seeing a difference, not so much at 4K where they're basically the same, the i5 11400F and the Ryzen 5 5600. But at 1440p, we're actually seeing a significant advantage now in favor of the Ryzen 5 5600. For well, the GPU bound benchmarks, this was actually the biggest difference I could see here. Double check the numbers, double check the configuration and everything like that. This was indeed a huge victory for the Ryzen 5 5600. And moving on to Rift Breaker, we've got here at both 4K and 1440p, virtually identical results. And if you guys have tested Rift Breaker before, you'll know it's an extremely well optimized game. There's no surprise to see in this particular game, there wasn't a huge difference. But moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, this was yet again a similar story to Rift Breaker, where at 4K Ultra settings, we virtually saw no difference. And then at 1440p Ultra settings, we saw no difference yet again. But also, if you're wondering what the power consumption is like at higher resolutions, say 4K, here's where in Warhammer Space Marine 2 being about 10 watts more efficient than the i5-11400F. And this is because we basically got virtually the same FPS in this game. So here's where we're gonna shift gears into Marvel Rivals, a competitive online multiplayer title, but also a game with decent optimization and a good set of graphics options here to explore. Now here's where at both 4K high settings on the 9070 XT, we saw no difference basically between 
the Ryzen 5 5600 and the i5-11400F. But here's where I decided to include a few more benchmarks for this particular title where we're dropping down to 1080p low settings and on the 9070 XT, we did see virtually the same FPS. And then if I changed over to the RTX 5090, we did see also virtually the same FPS, but here's where the 11400F did score an ever so slight victory. A rare win here for the 11400F, where in these benchmarks here today, it only scores one more victory and it's ever so slight, which we'll move on to right now. And that is with Fortnite at 4K epic settings. Here's where it beat out the Ryzen 5 5600 by one FPS and two FPS and 2 FPS on the 0.1% lows. Going over to 1440p, here's where we basically saw the same FPS, just like 4K, but it was in favor now of the Ryzen 5 5600. And then going down to 1080p low settings with epic view distance, here's where we now saw a 25% advantage towards the Ryzen 5 5600. Now, if we change things over to the RTX 5090, Here's where we also see a 19% increase in FPS with the Ryzen 5 5600 over the i5-11400F. However, you may notice that both the total FPS and the 0.1% lows are lower than that of what the 9070 XT is giving out. So meaning in these CPU bound situations, depending on the game, you may actually get better FPS on the AMD GPU, but there is another title where this does actually get reversed. But we will move on to the next title where it doesn't happen. And this is Counter-Strike 2. For 1080p on the lowest settings with 100% screen res for the 9070 XT, we see a massive 23% advantage towards the Ryzen 5 5600, scoring near 400 average FPS and the 0.1% lows were actually noticeably higher too. Now going on to the RTX 5090 testing for Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p low settings, here's where we saw a massive 34% increase in average FPS and the total FPS on both occasions was lower with the RTX 5090 than that of the RX 9070 XT. However, here's where the 0.1% lows actually extracted more of a difference on the Ryzen 5 5600 than that of the 11400F. To move on to the last title here, we got Baldur's Gate 3, and here's where the 9070 XT on low settings 1080p, we saw a 27% advantage towards the Ryzen 5 5600 with virtually the same 0.1% lows. Then moving on to the Nvidia side of things with the RTX 5090, here's where the oddball comes into the equation where the Ryzen 5 5600 did 231 average FPS with an ever so, like basically the same 0.1% low. I was gonna say ever so slightly higher, but it's basically nothing. But then on the Intel side of things, we saw a higher result too, but a lower 0.1% low. So 193 average FPS, but then a 0.1% low of 66. However, when it came to power consumption testing at 1080p low settings with both the RX 9070 XT and the 5090 on these two CPUs, we saw basically the same power consumption levels as well as the same temperatures so with the basic Ryzen Stealth cooler on the Ryzen 5 5600, you're going to be getting around 80 degrees Celsius in a 23C ambient environment. And then when it came to the 11400F, I just used this really cheap cooler I had lying around. It's pretty much a Wraith Stealth version of a generic banger CPU cooler that I found somewhere. And this thing was also scoring, lo and behold, around 80 degrees Celsius too. Now, for gaming day in and day out, this would be the one thing I would change. I would suggest spending a little bit more money and getting, say, something like the traditional snowman that I've been recommending for years here on the channel. But even then on AliExpress nowadays, there are cheaper options that do a better job. And just for that little bit extra money that you spend on this CPU cooler, you'll drop your temps down to under 70 degrees all day, every day, most likely in the 60 degree region while you're gaming which makes a huge difference in my opinion for the longevity of the CPU. But also for me, it's a peace of mind thing where I just like my components running cooler. So then if something does happen to my system, I can rule out temperatures as being the core problem and try and find out if there was a problem that was caused by something else. So with all that out of the way, it's now time to conclude today's video. Ryzen 5 5600 or the i5-11400F. Now in terms of upgradability, it's pretty much a dead end street for both these lineups in that all you've got after these six cores is say on the Intel side an i9-11900K or an i9-10900K if you want to go that route. But then also for the Ryzen system, you've got a 5700X3D 
But even then, the 5700X3Ds have kind of gone up in price lately, which is why I haven't really been talking about them that much. And then the 5800X3D, I just don't know where to get these for a good price anymore. In fact, if you're going to be spending this kind of money on an i9 11900K, or say, for instance, you want to go out and get a 5700X3D, you're much better off just spending a little bit of extra money now and getting a Ryzen 7 7700 because that thing is just extremely good value, has the upgrade path, and if you spend a little bit more now, you'll be getting a lot later, I think, as well as getting a lot now as well in terms of extra FPS if you are going with a higher-end GPU. But that being said, if you're on a budget and you're trying to save money, both these CPUs are checking out with excellent performance. They're checking out with decent power consumption. And especially if you want to get an even cheaper graphics card off the used market, say, for instance, a used RTX 3070 or a used RX 6700 XT, then both these CPUs are going to be great choices. However, that said, if I was to pick one over the other, I would go with the Ryzen 5 5600 for gaming. Though that said, from my experience, if you're looking to do content creation, I would look at getting, say, the i5-11400 with its little iGPU on board, which can definitely help you out in tasks outside of gaming, especially if it comes to video editing and mainly text editing overlays on video editing. I think the iGPU, that's where it does accelerate, at least from my experience, and testing out things with video editing. So for gaming, I'd give the slight edge to the Ryzen 5 5600, but also does cost an additional six US dollars on the platform or 10 Aussie dollars. And so it does carry a little bit higher of a cost, but also from today's testing here today, it is a slightly more efficient CPU, at least at higher resolutions, but also ultimately does carry, at least across a few of the games here, a significant performance increase, at least at 1080p low settings. Though some final questions you may have about both these CPUs is that on the H570, it had PCIe Gen 4, it had resizable bar, and same for the B550 motherboard, that had no problems locking those two things in either. But then for the H570, I was actually surprised to see that I could get 3600 megahertz locked in, no problems. I thought Intel around this generation was still suppressing memory speeds, at least to a maximum of 2933 megahertz. But apparently with the i5, 11th gen and higher, you're able to get higher memory speeds on say B560 and H570. But at least on this ASRock Phantom gaming board that we tested on here today, which I did pick up in Japan for an absolute bargain. I'll put the link to that video up here if you wanna see some of the used bargains that I do get. That board was included in that parts hunt, picked it up, and also picked up the B550 Phantom Gaming 4 on a bargain too. And both these boards came in at very similar costs on my local used market when I got them. And the actual results for the better part were pretty close, except for some of those 1080p low numbers. Anyhow, guys, outside of that, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And do let us know in the comments section below which CPU would you get out of these two? Or would you just simply sacrifice, wait a little bit longer, and try and stretch it for a Ryzen 7 7700? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And with that said... If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.